Well, actually, you can stand back up now, I suppose, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> Just for a few minutes, I'll tell you. I'll give you the moves. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here with you today to celebrate this beautiful uh, wedding mass for Mark and Christy. In a special way, God calls us all to the wedding feast of the Lamb every time we come to this place, and it's a great joy whenever we can celebrate a wedding uh, together like this. I have been just honored to have been part of this for you. We also welcome any visitors here, and we're happy to have you. And um, if you have any questions during the liturgy, just save them to the end, and we'll uh, take them afterwards, if you don't mind. 
As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of the love of God in the lives of human beings, we call to mind our continuing need for him and for his love and mercy in each of our lives. You call us to the wedding feast of the Lamb, Lord, have mercy. You marry yourself to the church every time we come to this place, Christ, have mercy. You unite us in your body and blood every time we receive you, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these, your servants, Mark and Christy, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And you guys can all go back. Go back. And our first reader is... Do we have it? Audrey. A reading from the book of the Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with skillful hands. She puts the hand to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward of her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. Then after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Whenever we have the blessing to celebrate a wedding, it is a worthy time to stop and reflect on what we have gained in our lives together, and in a particular, how we have benefited from the love that has brought us all here in this place together today. God, though complicated by many perhaps well-intended ideas, is a truly simple being. And no matter what lofty and complex thing someone can say about God, God is love, simply. God is love. And his love offered to us gives us joy and the fullness of life. And all that the Spirit of God does is try its best to bring us together. God's will is our unity in him. We are created out of love by the Father 
saved by the love of the Son, and bound together by the bond of love in the Holy Spirit, united in God himself, in love itself. This is God's will for us human beings. It is in this way that the marriage of two people fulfills its purpose. Christy and Mark do all of us some great good just in seeing them come together in marriage. They teach us something about how God loves us by being together. Now, Christy and Mark, to this point, you have done me some great good over the last several weeks. For instance, in a moment of particular frustration with some paperwork for this occasion, I apologized to Christy, and she simply responded, don't worry, Father, he's worth it. <laughs> well, I cried for about five minutes after you told me that. Christy and Mark clearly understand marriage far better than I do, and that should not surprise any of you. And they've been very generous in sharing what they know with me. I can only imagine that for many of you who know them much more intimately than I do, how often they have done you similar good. I have been consistently delighted by things like this and surprised by yet some others. For example, on a much lighter point, I'm still surprised that after hearing how you met, that Lowe's has not hired you to do a series of advertisements or the sandpaper company that brought you there anyway. So blessed are you, Christy and Mark, for bringing us together, for doing God's work in this world, for being such excellent ministers to us all here today. Remember always that Christian life is a marriage. What we celebrate is the wedding of heaven and earth in every Mass. Nothing teaches us more about God than what we celebrate with you today. You have generously and freely given us so much. And on behalf of those present here, I can only say thank you. And may the Holy Spirit descend upon you both and make you perfect in the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can come on back up. Invite the bridal party back up. Right, Susie, I think, yep. I get the thumbs up, we're in good shape. My dear friends, you have come together in this church so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister and this community. Christ abundantly blesses this love. He has already consecrated you in baptism, and now he enriches and strengthen you, strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage a mutual and lasting fidelity. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Mark and Christy, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? We have. Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? I will. Will you, okay, we don't need to do that one, okay, good. Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Mark, do you take Christy to be your wife? Do you promise to be true to her in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love her and honor her all the days of your life? Christy, do you take Mark to be your husband? Do you promise to be true to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love him and honor him all the days of your life? I do. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessings. What God has joined, human beings may not divide. And now we'll have the rings, if you don't mind. Do you have them? Yeah. Is there just one? You got the other one too? Okay. Okay. Details. Yeah. Lord, bless and consecrate 
Mark and Christy, and their love for each other. May these rings be a symbol of true faith in each other and always remind them of their love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mark, you're first. Do you know the words? You didn't need me. Christy, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> there we go. Christy, please. And now we'll continue the Mass with our intercessions. So thank you very much. Oh, you're going to hold the book for me later. You'll be okay. You can go back. Please go back and be seated. You, you can know. Uh, well, we're all going to stand when the intercessions are read. Trusting in the loving mercy of God, we now offer to him our prayers and petitions. For the church throughout the world, may our faith in the love God has for us be expressed in our love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, may all lands that suffer violence and injustice find peace and reconciliation. We pray, pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, and for those who are unemployed, may our care and concern for those in need be a sign of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection and sanctity of human life from conception until natural death, may all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing for the sacrament of marriage, may they grow in wisdom and grace and see their vocation to married life as a sign of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christy and Mark, who begin their married life together this day, may they experience the love of God, the support of family and friends, and the blessing of a good life for their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially the relatives and friends of Christy and Mark, Deborah Woodhams, Sarah Noab, Simon Lazarus, Arthur Blondell, Alfred Lindstrom Sr., and Helen Lindstrom, along with all present for this wedding, may they enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving Father, you have heard the prayers of this community gathered in love. In your name, we, answer, we ask these prayers in your name. And may they be answered in your mercy, for we have asked them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as our gifts are prepared.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of his divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and with all the saints, we praise you and without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to his name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this, this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Jesus Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your chosen, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, your glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Mark and Christy, whom you have brought happily to the day of their wedding, that under your protection they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant, in the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I need your help there in carrying too. Please come on back up there. It's all good. Perfect. Let us humbly invoke by our prayers, dear brothers and sisters, God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of marriage. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image, 
and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined today in the sacrament of marriage. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Christi, and upon Mark, her companion for life, and may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of marriage, they may enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their work and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in this world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal.
Let us pray. Please stand. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the power of the sacrament we have received may find growth in these your servants, and that the effects of the sacrifice we have offered may be felt by us all, through Christ our Lord. One more time, how about that? We're getting there. Thank you. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart and love for one another, and the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone you meet. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity and love, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God the Father. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is that it? <laughs> no, it's not it is the answer. Mark, would you like to kiss the bride? I don't think you have to answer that. I got it. Thanks. It's a wonderful honor to present Mr. and Mrs. Mark and Christy Woodhams to you all. Thank you.